Mix it with my mixing tip, how to make your mixes translate on different monitoring systems. One of the more challenging things uh, about doing mixes is getting them to translate on different speaker systems. Um, speaker systems including headphones, earbuds, laptop speakers, um, um, all kinds of different multimedia things, car stereo systems, um, smart media, uh, you figure it out. All the different ways that people play music. And I think this is probably more difficult than it's ever been. Um, in the past, uh, many record companies would hire um, engineers to do separate mixes for radio, and this is something that still goes on, um, primarily thinking for how the mix translates through the broadcast audio format uh, in terms of broadcast radio. Um, and today, a lot of that is more digital transmission, and, uh, and most of the downloads and media that people have are not on cassette tapes, and so many of the things like that are not really necessary in terms of translating. In other words, the frequency response, response characteristics pretty much carry from end to end. So what is it that makes a monitoring system sort of translate from, from setup to setup? I think probably the, the, the um, most informative place to go is right to our Fletcher Munson curves. One of the things that happens in, in um, making a mix and getting it to translate is understanding a little bit about how we hear and um, and at the different levels that we listen at. Because not only will your, will your mix have to translate from one speaker system to another speaker system, and they're, they're all set with different frequency response patterns and, and all of that sort of stuff, but um, they, people will be listening at different volumes. And what I've come to realize in the way that I've practiced mixing in terms of making this translation and getting things to move is that there is a frequency area that is probably more important in the mix than any other frequency area. And it's not necessarily the one that people concentrate on the most. Um, and I highlighted it here in red. Um, now, when you're actually mixing, people kind of focus on getting the high end right and the low end right and all of those sorts of things. And while that's important, what ends up happening is a lot of that stuff disappears, on, especially on smaller speaker systems. But you don't want the instrumentation to appear. And so what I've realized is that there's a zone. There's a zone in which almost all speaker systems will play audio and uh, and will you know have audio present in them. So no matter how filtered down, no matter how small the speaker, you will find audio in the spectrum within this range. And it also happens to line up very nicely with a range that is almost completely level at uh, every every listening volume. So if you're familiar with the Fletcher Munson curves, um, they are uh, a series of tests that were performed many, many years ago uh, by two guys named Fletcher and Munson. And, uh, and the tests were made um, you know, more sophisticated and developed and all of that sort of stuff later. But being as the, the first two to really study this, the purpose of the study was to scientifically study the relationship between the way we perceive volume and um, over the frequency spectrum. Um, and what they did was a series of tests where they basically um, asked people to say, tell me when this sounds at the same volume as this. And they might compare it to, say, a one kilohertz tone, and they would go down the frequency spectrum and up the frequency spectrum. And what they would find is that when you went down at certain monitor volumes, like say you were listening at 50 dB SPL, and an average room environment, just to give you an idea, is usually somewhere around 60 uh, in the 60s. So that would be just sort of an average room, like not a quiet studio or anything like that. But if you were listening at that volume and you were listening to 1K at 50 dB SPL and you followed this down and you trying to, wanted to get like 20 cycles, for example, and we follow this curve, uh, let's see, all the way up to here, uh, then you would have to add a ridiculous amount more, almost like 40 dB more to essentially get the same kind of frequency response. And that's crazy to just think about um, uh, in terms of balancing these things out. Now, for the most part, people don't really perceive you more feel sub frequencies like that. And then you also get some strange things that happen on the top end. Like these curves are actually inversions of the way that we hear. So there's more sensitivity in these areas where it dips and less sensitivity where it goes up. So what you have is an area in here, which I like to highlight is about 200 up to about 2K. And in this range is an area that encompasses a lot of fundamental frequencies of instruments, but also a place in which there is some sense of balance. And a mix has to be balanced in this frequency area 
in order for it really to translate from speaker system to speaker system and volume system uh, at different volumes in all those different systems. Now, what ends up happening is that when you have a kick drum, although you may not get the low frequencies or the sub frequencies of the kick drum, you'll have some representation of the attack or the note and a, a, an ability to get a little bit of the body somewhere in there. All guitars kind of fall in there. A bass and almost all basses, which will, uh, will reside their fundamentals mostly in this lower range below this area, there are harmonics which resonate up above and the attack comes through up in, in uh, an area, usually somewhere in the 800 cycle range, you know, somewhere around there, give or take. And, um, and so what you'll do is you'll get that, that kind of, it's like usually like a good place to boost to kind of get that note so it translates. So how do you work with that in a mix? One of the ways that I like to work with this is to turn the mix down very low. And what it does is that it starts to um, level off or kind of trim off low end, and then you'll get some other things that'll happen with the high frequency response. You'll still be sensitive because relatively, if you kind of look at all these curves, the uh, the two to six K range, uh, where we get a lot of the, the articulation still dips uh, or, or is still heightened almost equally throughout the whole spectrum as you kind of go up and down. So what you'll see here in all these different listening areas though, is that the spectrum saves relatively within a few dB. And that's an important thing um, uh, in, in terms of just understanding how, you know, this is going to work in a monitoring system. So when you turn down the volume, you kind of start to um, naturally kind of roll off some of these frequencies. You'll still get some heightened response here, but most of this is articulation, attack, and transient energy. So if you find that when you lower the mix, quite often what will happen is a vocal will kind of stand out or stick out a little bit more. Uh, or a little bit uh, more than some of the other things. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that our our hearing is more hypersensitive to vocals in the vocal range. So it's a little bit harder to kind of get that to sit in the right place when you bring it down to a, a lower level. But most other instrumentation is fairly easy. And when you play the music through at that lower level, notice as you lower the level, as you're bringing it down, if instruments start to disappear. And take note of what those instruments are. And when they, if it's the piano, for example, or something like that, then you can revisit the mix, go back and find some kind of frequency in this zone that you can kind of bring in, find a hole in the mix or a place in the mix on the frequency spectrum that allows you to kind of um, get it to sit. So when you lower the speaker level, that it, it sort of sits without really changing in volume. The idea is as you go up and down in volume, and that's really one of the best ways that you can, you can get this to work or to translate, um, what you'll notice is just notice how the mix changes, and the mix shouldn't change. Things like frequencies will disappear, okay? That you can't control, and that's the part that makes it translate from system to system. If you work in this way, where you sweep from higher volumes to lower volumes, notice how the balances change, make adjustments in that range, work with it, right? And, and set that tone and get that right. What you'll find is if when you take that mix out and then you start bringing it and playing it on things, play it on your laptop speakers, play it on, you know, the computer speakers, um, you know, listen to it on your earbuds, on regular headphones. If you have multiple monitors, obviously you switch around and do the same test with multiple monitor systems. Um, sometimes those things, those, uh, little cubes, aura tones, um, or oven tones <laughs> is the, is the company that kind of makes them now. Sometimes those can be helpful for that because they're sort of filtered down. You know, if you really wanted to, you could even go ahead and put a filter on the mix bus that filters frequencies above and below that range and see what your mix, how your mix kind of translates, what disappears when you bypass and put that in and out. And that's kind of, uh, that's sort of the idea here. Now, in terms of doing this, I can actually play a mix here and uh, we can apply something like this. So this is completely unrehearsed, uh, so uh, which makes it even more fun. I'm not going to use anything um, too special here, but I'm going to use it uh, something that is, I'm going to do uh, sort of a tight cue. So let's just kind of tighten it up here. Let's kind of bring this up to like 200 and then let's just kind of see what happens here. And let's see if my mix, my own very own mix holds the water here. Uh, uh, for this test, and uh, okay, so let's just see. So let's hear it full frequency. Let's 
still plenty of kick drum in there. Still hear plenty of bass. So you'll notice that some things will, will kind of tone back, like the hi-hats, for example. All right, there's a... Where a lot of the tone kind of comes up in a higher area. That's never going to disappear in a normal speaker system, but just to kind of make sure it's represented in that area. So even with that filtered frequency response, if I now go ahead and, and say like, okay, maybe on like a laptop speaker system, maybe I'm kind of getting a little bit more high frequency, something along. And it may not be that low. So one thing I will say with this that, that it is missing right now is bringing a bit more of the pump in on the kick drum, just so that pulse kind of really stays there. But it's a good, it's kind of a, an interesting kind of bullet test to kind of uh, set up. Now I'm just kind of doing this through um, headphones. You do this through monitors. Um, and this is kind of a way of just like checking your mix to see if you have everything fully represented. Now, you have to be careful about this because when you start working, you want to go back to full frequency, make your adjustment because you have to understand how that's going to affect in the full frequency spectrum, then go back down to the filtered spectrum and see what works there. So what you'll find in the mix when you kind of set up and you work within this range, um, as long as things are solidly represented in that area, I bet you'll find as you start to translate this to different speaker systems, things will kind of lay out a little bit better. Now, there are many other elements that go into this. This is not just an equalization thing. It also has to do with compression, the solidity of the imaging, how you set up the depth with effects and all of that sort of stuff. So there's some separation aspects, which also help it to translate from speaker system to speaker system. But if you can kind of work with this system a little bit, I think you may find some interesting results in terms of making your mixes translate better. And it may be revealing about what it is that you're exactly doing in your mixing. You may be over taking away too much information from this area, which is sort of exposing your mix and making it weak. So when you start to play on, on uh, uh, systems that have a, a compromised frequency response characteristic, that it doesn't quite translate as well. All right, there's a, a, a little tip, a couple of ideas on how to make uh, your mixes translate on different monitoring systems.